you are evil. You need to delete the video and apologize to Serena. Hi everyone, I thought I would give a bit of an update on what's happening with the service uh, now that we've got another season out of the way. I think 2018 has been a pretty good year really, pretty interesting. A lot of the top players suffering injuries that uh, kept them out for months. That also seemed to give the opportunity for some of the fringe players to have um, breakthrough seasons. And for a change it wasn't the very top players who, who dominated the headlines. The women's slams gave us three first-time slam winners. Uh, Wozniak has always been criticised for not winning Grand Slams, even though she spent a long time at, at world number one. She shut those people up by taking the Australian Open in January. Uh, Halep's had her chances in slams, never been able to take that final step. She did so at the French Open. She took that title. And obviously, who can forget Naomi Osaka beating... Serena Williams for the US Open title. Wimbledon didn't see a first time slam winner, but Kerber uh, has not won the Wimbledon title before. So lots of firsts in the slams. Never been a huge Serena Williams fan, but we can't deny that the comeback that she made from having uh, her daughter and the complications that, uh, that arose there to reach the Wimbledon final and also the US Open final, huge achievement. I'm not sure anybody else would have been able to get back uh, quite as quickly as she did. On the men's tour, as usual, we didn't get uh, any new champions. Quite unusual to get them in there with the, with the tournaments being best of five. Dominic team did reach the French Open final. And Kevin Anderson continued his improvement in the... Uh, in the top tournaments, reaching the Wimbledon final. Djokovic, Nadal and Federer all had decent seasons. Um, there were signs that Federer is not going to be able to stay at the top level. Probably not for, I can't see him doing it for two more seasons. That would be his limit. Um, he's 37 now. Tennis takes so much out of a player, physically. Uh, he'll be able to manage his seasons to get the most out of his body, but I just don't see him still playing at 40. I can't also see him wanting to continue if he's not able to compete at the very top of the game. Djokovic, probably 18 months ago, started a real crisis of confidence, also had some injury issues. He's managed to sort his head out. Very strong second half of the season. Two slam titles. Don't think he'd even been in a final for a couple of years. Uh, and probably achieved what's likely to have been his, his main aim, which was to get the number one ranking back. There were a lot of players on the men's side that had injury issues. Murray struggled to come back, uh, probably finding it hard to trust his body after the surgery. Vavrinka came back and played some reasonable tennis at times. Songa came back late in the season and again played some decent tennis. Uh, Burdich had some injury, sorry, some back injury issues uh, and missed a large chunk of the season, but he is expected back in 2019. Not all doom and gloom. A uh, couple of players made successful comebacks, Del Potro and Nishikuri. Both came back from wrist injuries. Nishikuri took a while to get back to form, but he had a good season overall. His stats are pretty strong. And Del Potro looked as strong as ever. He should be uh, a force to reckon with in 2019. Wouldn't have expected to be talking about John Isner the way he started the year. Uh, but a title in Miami boosted his confidence. And he actually ended the year top 10 and also made the year end finals. So good effort from him. And you've got to mention, if you're talking about 2018, Alexander Zverev qualified for the year end finals. I was also eligible for the uh, the ATP Next Gen Finals, which are for the top players under the age of 21. Took the decision, not surprisingly, to play in the main event and proved to be a good decision as he ended up winning the title, beating Djokovic in the final. 
Uh, also, a lot of players on the men's tour who really lifted the levels. They're going to be pushing the top players in the next couple of seasons. I think in two years' time, we're going to be looking at a very different look. Top 10. Also, several players on the men's tour who really lifted the levels and found that they could c compete with the top players. Um, they're going to be pushing the current group of top players in the next couple of seasons. And I think we're going to have a very different look to the top 10 in uh, two years' time. My top memory from the season may seem a little bit obvious. Uh, it's got to be the US Open final, uh, the ladies US Open final. Always nice to see an underdog do well. Osaka played a superb match, but we also had all the bollocks around uh, the coaching and the lies that Serena and her coach told, plus obviously the meltdown uh, from Serena. The real reason that it's memorable for myself was <laughs> due to the reaction to the video that I posted afterwards. When the match finished, I took the dogs out for a walk and I thought, what a match, I've got to make a video about that, I'll do it in the morning. But as I continued to walk around, I thought, that's going to be too late. People are talking about it now, they're, they're interested in it now, especially in America where it was still early evening. So I got back, grabbed the laptop, uh, just sat on the sofa, took my microphone downstairs and just gave my opinion of what had happened. I think it was only about eight minutes. Uploaded the video and went up to bed. By the time I'd plugged the laptop in upstairs and plugged the screens in, I think there were 200 views. Now my videos generally get anywhere from 100 to three, 400 views. So 200 in a few minutes was noteworthy. By the time I got ready for bed, it was up to about 500. And I thought, well, I'm going to get a couple of thousand by the morning. By the time I got up, it was around 10,000 views. By the time I'd taken my wife to our daughters, she was looking after the grandkids, it was 20,000. Ended up on over 200,000 views, which is mental. Um, probably more mental was the fact that there's 850 dislikes. Uh, some of those were due to, I think people were expecting to see f footage of the, uh, of the final and one commenter said, I thought I was going to see a video of the final and all I saw was a guy sat on his sofa, either drunk or high, wittering bullshit. Thanks for that. Glad you enjoyed it. Uh, one or two of the comments were a little bit over the top. Uh, you are evil. You need to delete the video and apologise to Serena. Really? So anyway, what's been happening with the Trade Shark Tennis Service? Um, I looked at the sales website and it seems, well, it had been neglected for, for quite a while. It was converting okay, but just needed a bit of an upgrade. Uh, did some research on what sort of things work well and it turns out there's a lot needed changing. I did make some changes to the search engine optimization which was pretty poor, piss poor actually. Um, took some advice from a few people on how it looked, asked members what sort of terms they used on the search engines when they found the site, how many times they visited uh, before purchasing, all great information that I got back from them. Uh, I thanked everybody personally that, that did send information, but just as a general thank you to those who did take the time uh, to answer my questions. I don't ask too many questions of my members. One or two were a little bit upset that I was daring to contact them. Um, I'm contacting members of my service and asking them a question. I wasn't even selling anything. Don't see what your problem is. Thanks anyway. Uh, haven't done too much with uh, the blog. Pretty happy with the way that looks. Normally around this time of year, I tend to be changing the layout and colors and the header. I've changed the header image a couple of times. I've removed one of the sidebars on there, but other than that, I'm pretty happy with the way that looks. Uh, no major changes there, other than I've added or re-added the forum. Years ago, 
I just put everything on on the blog. We had a chat room, a forum, a shout box, anything, anything I could think of to help people interact. Uh, people gravitated towards the chat room, so the forum and the, the shout box never took off anyway. But the forum, there's about 5,000 posts on there, but no one was really using it. Plenty of people reading it, but nobody posting. So I took that down. But I didn't want to delete all the posts on there. There's, there's some good information on there. At the time, the people who make the uh, the WordPress plugin for the forum decided they weren't going to support the free version. As people weren't using the forum, I wasn't prepared to pay for the, uh, for the updated version, so I took it down. Recently, I looked at putting it back on there and I saw that they were now supporting the free version again so I've put it back on all the posts are there um, I'm going to be having I've put on a couple of sections on there trade shark diary that I've already started obviously that's going to be a little bit more interesting once the season actually starts I'm also going to have um, the straight betting tips on there so free to everyone uh, hopefully create a little bit of interest so feel free to have a look there say hello on the forum ask any questions on there let's see if it can take off they're not as popular as they used to be forums but no reason why this one can't be something else uh, that I started in 2018 was the YouTube channel uh, it's proved very popular plenty of views plenty of feedback um, that's certainly going to continue in 2019 uh, something else to look out for on there I've never interviewed anybody before and I saw someone who has been around the Betfair trading scene for want of a better better word longer than me was an established trader when I uh, found Betfair Trading in 2008. Very controversial figure. Uh, and I noticed recently on his Twitter feed that someone else was going to be doing an interview on him and got so much flack that he pulled out, wasn't, wasn't prepared to do it. Uh, a lot of you probably guessed it's going to be Tony Hargraves, who is also known as the Badger. Uh, known him for a lot of years. I don't have a lot to do with other people in Betfair trading. Um, I've got a really low tolerance level for bullshit and people who spout bullshit. I'm not saying that Tony does any more than anybody else. Uh, if I want to listen to bullshit, I can talk to myself. I can get more than my uh, required quota of bullshit coming straight out of my own mouth. But I tend to just keep myself to myself. And I think it would be interesting to interview Tony. I don't want to do the usual, how did you get to trading? What's your best trade? I don't want to do shit like that. Although there's going to be some of those questions. I want to maybe delve into why he gets so much abuse, how he handles it. Certainly years ago, he didn't handle it quite as well as he does these days. Uh, but we've all, uh, I was certainly guilty of that. I had a bit of a hair trigger in the early days to any criticism. Uh, these days, I just don't give a toss what anybody thinks. I used to say that back there. Ten years later, it's definitely true. So something to look out to look out for in 2019. There's no real. I've, I've spoke to Tony about doing the interview. I haven't given any details. I've probably given you more details now than I gave to him. Uh, and I think that'll be interesting. Um, what else? Trading advice emails. I've personally had my best trading results uh, ever in 2018. I've traded a few less matches. Is that English? A few less matches? Fewer matches. Um, but made more. Uh, I think I'm interpreting stats better, a lot better. Um, as a result of that, the trading advice emails, I think, have been very strong this year. Uh, I'm really looking forward to what I can achieve next year 
and obviously the, the information that I produce for myself is what's included in the trading advice emails. Now people always ask me for some sort of results for the for the emails and of course I understand that. The problem I have with this, and I've, I've said this before but I'll, I'll, I'll put it on here as well, because I'm giving advice on every main tour match every day, to provide results for that, you have to provide results for every main tour, main tour match every day, every every match. If you pick and choose, or if you or if you post partial results, you're just going to get criticised for cherry picking the results. It's got to be full results or no results. The problem with doing that is you would need market data, you would need price movements for every match. No one. Can trade every match and even collating that information I just don't see how to do it and even thinking about how to do it blows my mind what I did do is post um, on the blog an archive page of every single advice uh, spreadsheet that I sent out during 2018 so you can download those and back check there if you've got a way of back checking back check from that what I did do was go through the Wimbledon tournament uh, and indicate whether the advice would have given the possibility of profit. Uh, and even then, some of the the point by point records that you can that you can get off of certain uh, websites didn't have information for every match. And even just doing the first round match at Wimbledon took me about four hours. I haven't got time to do that. I haven't had any feedback about whether it's useful. What I've done with the Wimbledon. Um, advice I just don't see how that can work um, my, my best my best advice on the advice on the trading advice is try it you can try it for a week for a tenner um, I've been around long enough there would be enough people posting on Twitter Facebook whatever if it was a bag of shite what I was posting the feedback that I get is far from that and it's the same information that I'm using myself, so I know it's good. I know it's effective. Um, I don't know how else to explain my, my issue with that. Some people will like it. Some people will say I'm hiding from the results. I'm not. I think it would look fantastic uh, if I was able to, to quantify what I'm doing. But no, because no one can trade every match, even if I post results and return on investment for every match, no one's going to see those figures. So say someone, for example, if someone can trade five matches in a day and they pick five matches that I got right, they think I'm some sort of genius. If they pick two that I got right and three that I got wrong, they think I'm some sort of joker. You know, it, it's, it's a hiding to nothing. And I, unless you can provide effective, accurate results, you're better not producing any because... It, there's so many people just sat there waiting to criticise unless you're totally transparent and I'm trying to be transparent but in the end not, not giving results take from that what you will ok one big uh, announcement if you like that I made fairly recently was uh, the price of the trading guide has been for the best part of 10 years has been set at £29 and for £29 you get uh, the trading guide itself plus my help and support for as long as you need it or until one of us dies um, for £29 that was insane value there's obviously a big difference between the help that I can give after doing this for 10 years compared to the help and advice that I could give from my one year's experience when I first released the trading guide in 2009. So the difference just in that, in, in value of what you're getting is huge. And it had reached the stage where 29 pounds just doesn't reflect uh, the quality of the product and the value that you're getting. So from January, uh, the price of the guide goes from 29 pounds to 39, which I still think is underpriced. 
uh, the price of the bundle, which includes the trading guide and two months of the trading advice email, will move from £39 to £49. So you still uh, save £30 on the bundle. Um, wasn't an easy decision. You know, I, I tried to set the price back in 2009 at what I thought was fair for new traders. I've maintained that price for almost a decade and I've added so much to the guide. I've, I can add so much more to your trading with my experience. I think it's still value for money and I'm comfortable with that price. I think that's all I've got. More or less got through this in one take without a load of outtakes. And I hopefully will see you in 2019. Have a good Christmas. Thanks for watching.